Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, with a review of the Illustrator Markers by Spectrum Noir. They are a new version of a marker they've had around for a couple of years. When they first came out with the Illustrator Marker, it was their first brush tip marker after the um, original Spectrum Noir marker, which would be these two here. First they came out with these, but there was an issue with nibs drying out. So one thing I've noticed with Spectrum Noir is if they have a problem with a product, they will revamp it and re-release it. So these went out and these came in. And with the addition of these markers, which the caps are really hard to remove on these, I just wanted to make a mention of that. Um, I have before when I did my review on these. Um, with the addition of this, they decided that they would make the nibs available to be ex replaced in for a brush nib. So you could take out the chisel nib and you could put in a brush nib. And um, that was really great because it gave people the option for brush nibs on the markers that they wanted. However, repl replacement brush nibs were kind of pricey. So they came out with, I'm not sure if this is the reason they came out with the illustrators, but they came out with the illustrator markers and their markers had a fine tip on one end and a brush tip on the other. And they were one of the first markers to have a brush tip on one end and a bullet tip on the other. Usually it's brush tip and chisel tip. But since the, this company caters to stampers and color and book enthusiasts, having those two finer tips just was a better idea, a better fit for them. And these are the sets that Spectrum Noir sent me. They actually contacted me and asked if I'd be interested in reviewing these, uh, which I was because I've had people ask me about them. So they sent me these sets, and you can take a look at the swatches in these different sets. Now, these are also available open stock. You can buy just the colors that you want. They retail for around $4 a marker. Uh, they're on sale for around 3 on the Spectrum Noir website or Crafter's Companion website if you are looking to pick up some individual colors. And as far as markers go, as far as um, like Copic alternative markers go, that's a pretty good price. So since these are available individually, you don't have to buy a set and get colors that you don't want. You also can get refills for any of these markers. And I've seen some brush uh, replacement nibs on their website, but I think those are just the ones to go in these markers. I don't, I didn't see any of the replacement nibs for these markers yet, but I'm sure they're going to come out with them since they are, uh, you know, since they've gone ahead and made a marker, you know, open stock markers and all of that. Um, I don't think you're going to need to replace them very often because with them being the Japanese style nibs, which are kind of the rubbery ones that um, like Copic has, they probably won't need to be replaced unless you've really put them through a lot of work and a, a lot of hard use. And it might be a situation where, and I'm just going to grab a Copic marker real quick, it might be a situation where the Copic nibs would even, would even fit and be the same. Gosh. Oh, they look pretty close. Yeah, they might be... The Copic nib holder area is smaller. I just think it's the plastic's wider on these. But I am sure they will um, They will advise either what nibs you can replace them with if you need to, or they'll have their own. I'm sure they'll have their own because they are usually pretty thorough with the products that they release. So the markers that these remind me the most of would be actually the Prismacolor brush marker because a Prismacolor brush marker has a high quality brush nib and it also has a bullet nib, nib on the other side. Now the interesting thing about these markers is that it's got your brush nib but it's got a super fine bullet nib so even compared to that, I'm just gonna bring this up and hopefully give it a chance to focus, you can see that the nib on the Spectrum Noir Illustrator is a little bit skinnier. Now I'm going to show you that in comparison because Prismacolor does have a pretty skinny nib. Um, and I really like that about their markers, how they had a fine and a, and a brush nib. If we look at their regular... Holy moly, get that cap off. Uh, if we look at their old style nib, their old style bullet, it is considerably thicker. They both come to a good point, but if you're doing coloring books or stamping, you're really going to want that small edge. Now another marker that these are similar to are the Stampin' Blends marker, because these are just like designed for rubber stampers, they're, they're made by the Stampin' Up! company. These cost $4.50 each, I think. They have a fibery tip, which is the types of tips that will eventually fray, and this is a disposable marker versus, versus this, which is a refillable marker, um, just so you can see a difference in the brush nib. This, like I mentioned, will fray a lot sooner than that because it's a fibery, kind of like a felt tip nib. And then the bullet ends, you have a much finer end on the illustrator. So I just wanted to put those side by side just because you have the same 
um, what do I want to say, the same uh, selection of nibs, the bullet and the brush, and that's kind of an unusual thing, so I just wanted to mention which markers had that feature in case you're, you know, we all live in different parts of the world, we all have different availabilities of products, and it's, you know, it's good if you know what's out there so you can purchase the thing that's going to make the most sense for you in both your budget and workability. Like, if you're someone who uses Stampin' Up! products and you only use Stampin' Up! products, it's going to make more sense for you to get these markers because they're going to match all of your ink pads, they're going to match all of your card stocks and whatnot. Even if it does fray on you, you can still order that one marker. So, you know, there's a pot for every lid, there's a there's a marker for every person that wants to use markers. So the markers um, that I think are comparable to the il illustrator would be the Art and Fly markers, which you can order open stock if you contact them. Not, it's not available on their website, but you can order those open stock. Copic, which of course you can open, you can order open stock. Um, Blick Studio, which you can order open stock or in sets, same as the other two. And um, Illustrator. And the reason I would put these four together because they all have replacement um, tips. They all have refills, they're all meant to be non-disposable markers. So I think that's in a, like a real um, a real plus. If you get the illustrators in a large set, you could pay around two dollars, but generally you're going to pay around three to four dollars for these markers. Blick Studio are around three dollars. Um, they go on sale a lot for around three, three fifty. Copics are obviously more expensive. They're more in the if you're getting the Copic Sketch, they're more in the $5 to $8 range. If you're getting the Copic Chow, they're more in the $4 range. Art and Fly is more in the $2 range. So um, Illustrator is kind of in the middle. It's in the middle of those price-wise. Price These should be pretty easy to find because you can order them right off the Spectrum Noir. Well, it's a Crafters Companion website, so you can order those. Um, I think anywhere in the world, so that's a nice bonus. And they fall in the Spectrum Noir coloring system range. So if you are familiar with their products, if you have their other markers, like maybe you got some of their tri-blends, which were these that came out earlier this year, I think, where you had the three different shades in one marker. Maybe you have this set and you're like, geez, I wish I had that lighter color and a brush tip because it would make blending so much easier. You could just buy BT3 or maybe you'd get BT1 and go a step lighter and have all of those together. Okay, do I have BT1 in this? I have AB1, which I could probably blend through to this and it would work out just fine. But if you've already been using Spectrum Noir products, you could order colors that don't duplicate what you already have. And they have a, I think, a 160 or so, give or take, markers in their range. And I like the way they arrange their colors. They have, it's very difficult to mess up blending with them because they have so many different categories for these different types of blues and different types of greens and different types of oranges. They have a more devised or more divided up spectrum than even Copic. They do have fewer colors than Copic, but I feel the way that it's divided up, it's just really, really easy to blend. This is my, you know, thin paper swatches here because I do have a bunch of the different Spectrum products I purchased over the years. And they have great color charts online, they have a lot of support for their materials, which is something that you don't get if you're buying one of the uh, bargain marker sets on like Amazon. So you do get a little bit more support. So what I want to do now is I want to do some blending just to kind of give you an idea of how these all work. And I am just going to, let's see, let's grab some of the colors that make sense together. So let's do AB1 and AB3. I like these trays, but it makes it hard for me to see when I've got them flat on my table and I'm, uh, I'm trying to work here. So a couple different ways you can blend. I've, I've, uh, I've demonstrated this before. You could start by priming an area with color, which is when you color something pretty flat. You just lay down a color. And what this does is it makes the area that you're coloring in uh, wet and it keeps your ink from drying on you. So then I could go in with the other color. Let's just get a nice, I could flick like that. Since this is a really responsive tip, you can do the flicking techniques and get a good blend. There is no chisel tip, so if you like to rely on the chisel tip for really pushing your ink around, that might be a problem for you. But I think this is, marker is more geared towards rubber stampers. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit, there we go. So I think that it's actually gonna be a little bit nicer to have 
that bullet tip where you could go in and you can clean up an edge. You know, like I could go in if I was on the edge of something and I could clean it up. Make a nice border if I wanted to. So that's the type of line you would get with your Now this is a soft tip. This the tip on these markers. The brush tip is softer than say Copic Blick or Art and Fly. Um, they're a little bit more like Prismacolor or Winsor Newton brush marker. So if you've used either of those markers, you'll know how um, how the tip's gonna respond. Now I'm trying to think how much the Prismacolors are open stock. I think if you were to go into like AC Moore and buy a Prismacolor marker and it wasn't on sale, I think it would run probably around $6. I'm not sure on the Windsor Newton brush marker. So, you know, you might be able to get the Prismacolor brush markers for about the same price. But usually, if you're if you're talking about full price, these are still going to be in the middle of the pack. Not as expensive as a Copic, um, not as inexpensive as a Biennio or Art and Fly. But the fact you can get it open stock individually, I think, is a big uh, it's a, is a big deal. Okay, let's also try CG one and CG three, and I'll show you a different way that I blend sometimes. Let's see. You always want to swatch out your markers, even with these. They're, you know, the, the, the uh, lids or the color chips on the end are going to be a little off. I like the plastic color chips versus the paper stickers like the, um, like the Prismacolor marker has because the paper stickers fade and the color chips, I mean, I've never had a color chip fade, the plastic chips, and they're right out, you know, in my studio light, which fades the, the uh, paper stickers a lot. Um, so let's say we want to do a leaf. I'm just going to draw the leaf in with, with my, um. My darker color. So if I was going to do a leaf, I would probably go in and I would add my shading. I don't know why I'm using the bullet end. <laughs> probably because this is how I tend to blend a lot if I'm if I don't have a um, if I don't have the brush tip. I bet that's why. And then I would go, whoops, then I would go in with my, I can stick with the bullet tips here. Then I would go in with my lighter color and I would just do little circles to help loosen that ink up. Kind of flood the, the uh, area with the ink. And you can see it's blending away those lines that I put. And then if I want to go back in with some, if I want to go back in with a lot of shadow, I can go in with a brush. But when you have that wet um, paper, your colors are going to soften as you put them down. So you can get quite a lot of, a lot of blending with either tip. It doesn't really matter. It's up to you, whatever you like to, whatever you like to use the most. And we could do a brown blend. We could do all four brown colors that I have here. I'll see how those go together. Let's see, we got those two, those two MBs and the two EBs. So we're using from two color families, but you know, I use from different color families all the time. Oh, we could even do, we could even go with that, with that cream color too. That would be, that'd be kind of fun. FS9. Okay, so let's put these in order. Get this one's the lightest, then that one, then that one, then that one, then that one. Okay, so probably the easiest thing to do when I've got a large area that I want to blend is I would draw, or what to say I'm coloring a person, I would color everything in with this lighter color first. I generally wouldn't be probably using that many colors. I usually use three, but I would color it all in with my first color. Then I would start working at dark to light. Using the flicking motion gives you a greater strength of color. When you first press down your um, your pen, 
you can almost see the ink puddle a little bit. And then you can lift up so you're not putting quite so much ink down as you go. And we'll go to the next color. And I can keep everything kind of wet by going over that original color. And then we can go into this one here. Then we'll go back to our first color. Got a pretty good blend there. And you can keep going back and forth until you've got just the right uh, blend that you want. So if that doesn't that doesn't look smooth enough to you, you can go right back. And this is a pretty big jump. We're going from that to that. That's a pretty that's a pretty far reach. And but as you're doing this, you are keeping that paper wet. I like to go back over the entire thing sometimes with an adjacent color and that really helps it blend. Um, but you're keeping this whole area wet so it doesn't want to seep and settle into the paper fibers. It kind of just, it doesn't set, I should say, yet. So it's kind of like if you get a stain on your shirt, say you're at a party and someone spills a glass of wine on you, if you were to soak that shirt in club soda or whatever, that's going to keep that stain from setting because you're keeping the, the you're keeping the fibers like you're keeping it wet so it doesn't doesn't soak in and set but there's a blend there um, we could do these three colors that that and that let's see flesh shade two flesh shade five and I need PP1. Let's try those colors. And this, these are so close together that I would just uh, take a shape and I would just go dark to light. So I'd start with my darkest, which would be right here, flesh shade five. Like we're, like we're shading a ball here. And the light source is coming in from the top. So I would get my dark in first. That's a pretty color. It's like a coral almost. And then I would get my next darkest color. And I would color right over what I've already done. You can get another layer of shadow on this. Uh, if you, when you're done, you go over with the dark just in that area. That Then you can bring that back a little bit dark if you need to. Okay, then I'm going to grab the lightest color. The brush tips do make it easier to blend, and that's why you get so much, um, that's why you hear so much fuss over brush tip markers, because they are easier. That's why Copic is so popular, and also because you can replace things, and I think that's great. I think that, especially this day and age, the more we can keep using what we buy, and the less we have to keep... Um, rebuying stuff because it runs out or because we change our mind or we didn't buy the right thing to begin with you know the better off we're we're much better off if we get the right thing for us the first time around and once that dries you'll be able to see the blend right now it's just looking kind of patchy because you're seeing the table color underneath but colors blend really well you can blend with other colors in the family let's see this is blue turquoise are there any blue turquoises let me see what color this looks like because I think we could do it with those. Let's let's do these two colors and these colors and see what we can get. That'll be fun. So where are okay? Because I love it that these will work with all the other spectrum noir colors. So let me see. That's the dark. Oh wow, the dark looks an awful lot like that. Let's see. What's this medium look like? I think. That the illustrator would be between those two. And then that one, this one is much lighter. So let's do let's do a shape using these. And we'll just do the dark to light blending color. So that was the light. We'll start with this dark. And of course I don't have a brush tip on these. These are the tri-blends only have bullet tips. I re reviewed those a while back so you can 
check those out if you're interested. So I'll blend that out with that color. Then I'll go to this medium color. And I'll blend it out with this one. Oh wait, no, I need to do the light. Then I'll do this one. So the other thing that is, uh, there is a nice screen printed kind of icon that tells you what you have for, you know, tip in there, but it's not, I can go over and blend everything with that light color. Um, but it's not really that easy to tell whether you have the brush tip end or the bullet tip end if your brush is slipped over like that, if your marker slipped over like that. So it might take you a second to identify which end is a brush and which is a bullet, but um, they blend really well. I think these are easier to blend, the illustrators are easier to blend than the Tritones and the um, original Spectrum Noir markers, but I think it's because the tips are so soft in the illustrator markers. The tips on the um, on the older Spectrum Noir markers did feel kind of squeaky and tougher to blend. I think the tritones got better, and I think it, I think they get better the more you use them too. So if you do have some stiff and squeaky markers that you can't seem to blend with, use them more. You probably just haven't softened them up enough yet, but um, these definitely get a thumbs up from me. Um, they get a thumbs up on the they're refillable and so ecological thumbs up. They get the quality thumbs up. They get the price thumbs up. Um, Check around before you order. Prices will vary between Amazon and the Crafters Companion website. Also, if they're on sale one place or the other. Uh, if it was me, I would recommend getting the largest set because, or the, they have a set of 36 where the price per marker is about $2 a marker. And that's probably the cheapest you're gonna get them. Unless you know you're just not gonna use those colors. Then just go and pick and choose and buy them open stock, especially since they're on sale for like $3.19. That would be the that would probably be the best way to go. That way you can get just the colors you want. You can look at the markers you have and see what's missing and go from there. Um, I highly recommend that you swatch these out. If you have other Spectrum Noir markers, go onto their website and print off the chart you can color in yourself. And that way you can um, make sure you're not buying the same thing twice or you could get a brush marker in your favorite color if that was important to you. There's no reason not to get these markers if they meet your needs. You know, don't just buy them because, you know, buy them if you need them. Uh, this is a card that I colored with those. Um, I did do a little Wing of Stella on top, but I, and there's some tutorial. If you want to see how I colored this, it's on a uh, video. It should probably just be a couple weeks ago. You should be able to find it on my channel. Um, but yeah, they blended really well. Even when I had a jump, like had to go big gaps between colors, which a lot of times we have to. If you're new to markers, you're not going to have all the colors in the world. You're going to have to take jumps between colors. And uh, the, between the nibs and the ink, it makes it really easy. So I'm pleased with them. I think they're a great investment. And I think they're um, they're a good value as far as spending your money on something that you can continuously refill and reuse. So there you have it. I want to thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, you can leave them down below and I will get back to you. And um, these are going to go in my regular marker stash because I can see I'm going to reach for them quite often. Thanks for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.